Hey guys, um, it's been a long awaited video. I got about 20,000 likes on my Instagram photo when I posted this picture and I asked you guys if you wanted to hear my hijab story. Um, I know it's been a while since that picture but I am back to create more content for you guys and one of my first videos that I want to share with you is my hijab story. Now I've been wearing hijab since the age of 10 um, and I remember the day that my mum kind of spoke to me about the whole hijab um, wearing you know story of how she wears it and how I should wear it and I wasn't kind of given much more than that it was just that this is our religion and you have to wear it sort of thing so I as a any girl wanting to please her mom thought okay I'll, I'll wear the hijab you know I didn't know much though that's the thing that I feel like quite sad about that I wasn't I wasn't told much about why I was wearing it and so my first day of school um, was quite a difficult one um, I turned up to school primary school I was still in primary school at this point and I had like a black and white leopard print style hijab which I used to wear in like it was really kind of like done up with the pin and then it was like taken up here like I don't know I'll share that with you guys it's kind of called Lebanese style hijab so my first day of school um, was a difficult one it wasn't necessarily I guess I didn't anticipate what it was going to be I just rocked up to school primary school I was 10 years old um, wearing my hijab and I I'm not gonna lie I got really weird looking stares you know people were looking at me as if I was literally an alien um, and they almost didn't recognize me and so let's kind of frame it you know don't forget I not that you would forget but you don't know but I went to school in Hackney it was called um, De Beauvoir shout out to De Beauvoir 1992 crew um, so I <laughs> I didn't have anyone literally wearing hijab in that school. There was no one wearing hijab at the time. Hijab was almost not really seen on children, especially the only time you may have seen it was in like slightly older Asian girls who would wear it, kind of wrap it behind their ears, but their hair is showing. So let me just kind of put you in the context of the environment of um, Muslims in Hackney. Um, and so when I went to school, it was like I said, primary school, I was getting stares, people asking me, why are you wearing that thing on your head? Um, and so I could only give them the answer that my mum gave me because it's my religion. So they would ask me, why are you wearing that thing on your head? Why are you wrapping your head with that cloth? Like, it was a bit awkward, but I just kept saying, it's my religion because it's my religion, it's my religion. And I guess I never really knew why I was wearing it, but I was wearing it and I was fine with it. And I guess, if anything, um, the fact that I wore it, in spite of the fact that I didn't know why I was wearing it, and the fact that kids were asking me why I was wearing it, and I didn't really have an answer for them, apart from the fact that it was my religion, it kind of, it kind of slightly made me, now in hindsight, feel like it's okay to do something that you may not understand and that maybe other people don't necessarily understand but your parents know best so you have to kind of respect that so for me I, I did it because you know my mum said to me that this is this is what I should do and so I continued wearing it and I went to secondary school the following year wearing it um, and so I wasn't necessarily um, upset that I was wearing it and don't forget this is at the stage where I am not going through puberty like no kind of hormones going around the place and um, when I went to school I went to an all-girls school Haggerston secondary school big, big up Haggerston <laughs> um, but I feel like now in hindsight maybe it would have been better to wear it in year seven because in secondary school because in primary school so many things had changed like everybody started to distance themselves from me nobody kind of almost related to who I was even though I was the same person 
all I had was obviously a piece of material covering my hair but at that age with children they just don't understand they don't understand that this is actually the same person yet they just have a cloth over their head so in hindsight I wish that my parents knew that and didn't kind of make me wear it at that age because it kind of ruined primary school for me I, I kind of lost so many friends and I just had one I guess authentic friend who stayed but she was hardly ever in <laughs> she was always absent <laughs> bless her you know who you are if you're watching I'm not going to mention your name but um, we're still friends so um so it was tough it was difficult it was difficult to maintain friendships at that age in primary school because everybody sort of ended up seeing me differently and uh, as if I wasn't the same person so with that in mind, I may do things differently with Nora, I don't know, I will assess it at a later stage. Um, now we're coming to secondary school, I'm in an all-girls school and it was, um, I guess, by then a little bit more um, relaxed because it was all girls, there were no boys and I wore it throughout year 7 and then year 8 came and in year 8, um, this is between the ages of 12 to 13, hormones kicking in, you're taking more pride of yourself, you kind of want to look a certain way and um, I had braces when I was in year 7 and then I had the braces off by the time I was in year 8 and um, a bit of peer pressure building up, nobody was wearing hijab in my school, still I was the only hijab in the school, it was predominantly a very mixed race school, we had whites, we had Nigerians, African, um, Jamaican, Turkish, Cypriot, Egyptian, Moroccan, Bengali, um, Pakistani, Indian, Hindu, like we had the whole mix in Haggistan and it was a really nice crowd and we had a few male teachers but it was predominantly girls school, female environment, one or two teacher, male teachers and so Friends would ask me, why do you wear your scarf? And it's like, oh, you know, it's my religion. Again, not knowing much of what to say in terms of my answer. And then it was like, well, do, do you have to wear it at home? Do you sleep with it on? And it's just like, no, like they've seen me take it off in PE. And this is actually, PE was one of the hard ones because I didn't want to take it off. And teachers like, you have to take it off for health and safety. I'm thinking, what health and safety? Like I've just got, you know, a bit of fabric over my head. What? possibly could go wrong but for health and safety I had to take it off and everyone was like oh wow look at your hair it's so long why do you wear that you shouldn't wear it and I'm like well I have to cover my hair um you know from 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 men from other men that potentially you know can't marry me um not can't marry me can marry me so for example I, I don't have to show um I don't have to wear a hijab in front of my dad or my brother or my uncle or those but you know I have to cover it in front of potential people that I could marry and and then they kind of would say well why are you wearing it here then it's a girl's school no one's gonna see so I was just kind of getting more comfortable with the idea that I didn't have to wear it in school because it was predominantly a female school and it was a girl's school and I can always wear it when I leave school and it was fine so after PE that kind of idea or that seed was planted where actually do I really need to wear it when I'm in school? You know, it's predominantly girls only and predominantly female teachers. And so, um, slowly, slowly, I would take it off in the female lesson, you know, when we didn't have a male teacher and I didn't have my hijab on and I would be fine not wearing it. You know, I got comfortable almost not wearing it. Um, and so, there was the day, and I still remember this day, when we had to go to RE for religious education and the teacher was the sub was the deputy head teacher and he was a man and i was like thinking oh my god he knows like he knows that i wear hijab like he's gonna think why isn't she wearing her scarf like he was our re he was our religious education teacher so he would know <laughs> that i should be wearing my hijab so like i'm feeling really nervous right now and i'm thinking i'm not wearing it and i don't even know where my scarf is right now it you know so i'm just thinking right i'm just gonna enter the classroom and he's just hopefully gonna just like not say anything and he didn't say anything, he probably, I don't know if he recognised me, but um, but then it became okay for me to not wear my hijab in school in front of the male teacher because he was a male teacher, he was married, he had kids, you know, that's how I started to kind of 
um, okay it for myself and um, there was another teacher for maths he was male and he was like you know middle-aged and you know married and family set like he's not going to look at me so I became very comfortable within my school environment wearing my hijab but then when I would go out then I would wear my scarf because um, I was getting picked up from my dad who would pick me up from school um, but then on a few occasions my scarf would go missing and I wouldn't know where my scarf is and I would literally have to find any random fabric at school and wrap my head around because my dad would be picking me up from school and then seeing me obviously without scarf is either going to make him question things or he's just I don't know so there have been a few random incidents where I had to use a cloth to cover my hair um, in front of my dad because I didn't want him to think well, where's her scarf and there's been one or two times where I didn't even have a scarf and I just hoped for the best and I just said look I had PE and I lost my scarf I don't know where it is um, so that that kind of little thing happened for the duration of my secondary school life um, and there were a few times where I had to leave school with some of my friends and they got used to me without my scarf and they almost forgot that I had a scarf on so I would leave school and walk home this is year 10 and I would go home without scarf and then before I get to my house I would put my scarf on so inside I felt like a bit of a hypocrite when I got to that age when I got to like the age of 14 15 16 I thought I know what I'm doing is wrong but yet peer pressure is making me continue to do this to not wear my scarf around friends because they now no longer identify me as someone that wears a scarf I'm now someone that doesn't wear a scarf and if I wore the scarf they're gonna disown me as friends and they're not gonna be my friends like what happened with me at primary school so I carried on this facade of being a hijab outside but in school I was not wearing the scarf and even leaving school I would not be a hijab I would just be like everyone else and uh, until one day, one fateful day, <laughs> um, I was walking home from school without my scarf and I was coming to the bus stop and lo and behold, who is at the bus stop? My mum. My mum was at the bus stop. She saw me, we locked eyes. I felt so awkward. Literally all the blood rushed out of my body I felt like I had seen a ghost. I felt like I was about to faint, basically. She gave me one stare and she almost like said, you know, get on the bloody bus, right? And she was sitting right beside me. She didn't say a word throughout the whole journey. And I'm just there, shitting myself. Um, thinking, oh my God, like never in my dreams did I think this situation would happen where I would leave school, get the bus, and she would be at the bus stop. I had to question her, like, I wonder if she was stalking me, but she was there and that feeling of like that cold feeling on your neck when like literally if you've ever had that feeling you know what i'm talking about and i think that's literally your blood leaving your body going down to your feet and you could almost faint basically but anyway so there's a cool breeze around my neck because i wasn't wearing my scarf but also because of how nervous i was and so i got home she could have literally like no she did let's just let's just put it how it is, let's be authentic in this. She literally grabbed me from my hair, <laughs> threw me inside the house. And she was like, did you know your daughter doesn't wear a scarf outside of school? And she shouted to my dad and um, I think he knew deep down, I think he knew I wasn't wearing it. And I was just like, crap, oh God, you know. But at the same time, looking back, she didn't explain to me why I should wear hijab. She didn't explain to me the real reasons. So in some ways I feel like, had you explained it better? Had you made me understand the responsibilities better? Maybe I wouldn't have hidden it from you. I would have, I would have been able to kind of confide in you and say, look, mom, I'm not wearing it while I'm at school. Is it okay? If I had that kind of open communication and dialogue with my mom, um, that I wish I had, I wish I had that when I was growing up, but I didn't, you know, I felt like um, I was growing up in a very kind of, my mum was a lot more strict on me, whereas my dad was a little bit more relaxed with things, he was a bit more, I would say, easygoing, a bit more um, open-minded, um, so there was that kind of 
divide between them but but I knew what I was doing wasn't necessarily obviously the right thing to do but it was just peer pressure and I didn't want to lose friends and I had already created friendships by the point you know by the point of year 10 11 I didn't want to lose those friendships but what I did do and I feel proud that I did actually is that when I had to go to college um, I decided that I'm going to go to a college where there are other Muslims who wear hijab so that I don't feel isolated because throughout my secondary school there wasn't anyone really that wore hijab apart from maybe one or two people um, later on like when they were in year 10, 11 they wore a scarf so I made the decision, the conscious decision to go to a college that predominantly had a Muslim community of people wearing hijab and luckily I found that in um, Westminster College um, in Maida Vale um, which I made amazing friends um, who wore hijab and who were so relatable you know they had gone through similar situations and those friends of mine actually made me really embrace my hijab and it made it feel like I belonged finally to a group of people who were similar to me and I'm so glad that I made that choice. I had to actually go to a college that was much further away than where I lived. Like I grew up, like I said, in Hackney in, um, and then we moved to Stoke Newington. And then to have moved all the, to have gone to travel every day to college in, to Westminster and made a veil was a trek. Um, luckily we moved like six months later, my mum saw that you know, this was kind of like a difficult situation of, of me and my brother both going to um, sec my, my brother was going to secondary school in, in Westminster as well so we ended up moving um, closer to there but it was such it was such the right thing to do because it's made me who I am today it's really made me to have that mix of growing up in East London with a very multicultural diverse group of people really founded who I was but at the same time the 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 hijab that I wear today I wear it authentically because I genuinely now understand why I have to wear it or why I should wear it not have to but should wear it I understand that it protects my modesty I understand that it makes me less vain and less likely to kind of just look at one aspect of myself you know it it's made me realize that it's not just about beauty you know and if I was to not wear my hijab I will be maybe more sucked into that side of things and wearing my hijab makes me realize that I can be who I want to be authentically without me being judged for what I look like and wearing it in the way that I did where I had that conflict of wearing it and not wearing it at secondary school and kind of hiding it from my parents makes me realize that I want to have an open relationship with my daughter when it comes to hijab. I don't want to force her or just tell her it's your religion and you have to wear it. I want to explain it to her why she should wear it because let's face it in this day and age I don't know if hijab is going to be around in the same way that it is now. Would it be like that when our kids are at the age that they should be wearing hijab? What kind of environment are they going to be susceptible um, to, you know, in terms of what, you know, what's going to be on social media, what's going to be on TV, what, you know, all these other influences that are out of our control. So having had that journey myself with it and having gone through it, you know, through, <laughs> through a parent who was strict and through a parent who was more relaxed, I would have liked to think that had I had more of an open dialogue with my mum about the hijab and had she made me realise it more, maybe I would have just worn it and owned it and just be like, this is my hijab and this is why I wear it or this, you know, like I wish that I had that answer to give as opposed to because it's my religion. Um, and even in today's age, day and age, like I don't know if people authentically know the reasons they're wearing their hijab and I think it's a continuous journey. I don't think it stops at you wearing your hijab. We are continuously trying to improve the way we wear our hijabs. My hijab is not perfect, but I would like to think that it's getting better and better. And I would like to think that the reason I wear it is not just one reason, it's many reasons. You know, I wear it to keep my modesty. I wear it to represent my religion. I wear it to remind me 
that I'm an example when I'm outside in front of people. It reminds me that I'm a Muslim, you know, for myself and for those around me. It makes me keep myself in check. Um, it's, it's also a veil in the sense of it kind of separates you from people that don't know don't know you you know they know that they can't kind of come um too close <laughs> almost which is important um so i'm proud that i wear my hijab and i'm happy that i've had this journey with my hijab and i'm proud to share my story about my hijab with you guys and to actually finally be okay to tell you that story because before i would be like oh my god people are gonna think i'm this and that and you know not everyone's gonna know this story but now i feel like i'm at a stage in my life where i just want to own it and i just want you girls to understand it that this is real life and at the end of the day we're all on this journey together and we're gonna have these things that are gonna either make us or break us or make us who we are and who our children would be so why not share those stories and why not open up about that so I'm glad I've uh, been able to talk to you about my hijab story and I hope that it's um, helped you guys identify with certain things and made you feel like it's okay to be that way and even if you're not wearing hijab it's fine like everybody is on their own individual journey at the end of the day and um, everybody is going to take their own journey themselves and at the end of the day we're all going to be accountable for our own selves so never never place judgment on other people or those that don't wear it or how they wear it or why they wear it um just be open-hearted and kind and compassionate um to those people and people around you and um that's it guys that's all i have to say i think i've covered it pretty much what i wanted to say i hope you enjoyed the the story of my hijab um and yeah i hope to share a lot more stories with you girls love you all